Thanks, Jersey. Hey, everybody. How is it going? I'd like to welcome everybody out tonight. I know this is new and unusual for me. Two days in a row. Haven't been able to <laughs> haven't been able to make that happen for a couple of weeks now or or more. Anyway, I hope everybody is doing great tonight. And tonight, <clears throat> uh, what I've got prepared for you is uh, the intro for um, uh, Victim of Changes by Judas Priest. So this is like the the longer version of it, not uh, not the way they did it on the studio record, but the way that it is on uh, the album Unleashed in the East. So this is like a real uh, riff, and it's not, it looks and sounds harder than it is. So it falls into that category that I really like. Yeah, so even on the trend, description it looks it looks intimidating but it's actually it's actually pretty easy um and the other thing that i thought would be kind of why i wanted to do this one i thought this would be kind of a, a cool thing that we could do is we can just kind of look at some of the sections and you can and we can go over what makes them the way they are this uses a lot of arpeggios that are just on a single string so if you if you get an understanding of how that of how that works then you can actually apply that into your into your own playing and the thing that's that's neat is that the uh uh the shapes are movable well to a degree we'll we'll get there when we when we get there but anyway <coughs> as usual there is uh there are tabs available for what we're going to be going over so in the description there's a link where you can get the tabs um, there's also a link in there where you can download this uh, really cool uh, chord chart uh, for free from Guitar Control. It's uh, pretty much every chord you'd ever need all on on one page. So it's a it's really, really handy, handy, useful tool. All right. So hopefully everybody has um, had a chance to download the tabs for this. And we can just dig right in. <clears throat> All right, so for this first part of it that um, makes up like a, a huge part of the uh, of the whole um, arrangement is all just taking place on your high E string. So we'll start off, we're on the 19th fret. So you can use... Uh, you're going to go from the 19th fret to the 15th fret. So your first finger and your pinky or even your first finger and your third finger would be all right. Once we're up above uh, the 12th fret, um, a lot of times I won't use my pinky as much just because of the frets are so much closer together. I freed him. So, yeah. <clears throat> so this first one here, we're on the 19th fret and the 15th fret. So put your first finger on the 15th fret and make sure either your third or fourth finger on the 19th fret. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pick 19 to 15 to the open string. So this is all made up of eighth note triplets. So you have a, you know, triple So there's, and it's in four or four times. So the, it, this first part of it anyway, is just all completely made up of eighth note triplets. So <clears throat> you have a certain amount of time that you're playing, you know, you're gonna play this and then we're just gonna move to a different section. So I'm gonna show you the way that I count triplets. So typically it's a thing, you know, people will just go triple it, you know, cause it's three notes, right? It's three eighth notes that make up one beat. So you could do it that way, triple let, because there's three syllables in there. So you'd be triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. But the only thing I don't like about counting that way is because then you don't, it's hard to keep track of what beat you're on, what beat number. 
So rather than do that, count that way, how I count it is I say the number of whatever beat, and then I say yellow, because yellow's got two syllables, and it's like like one yellow, two yellow, three yellow, four yellow. So that way I can keep track of what beat I'm on. So for this, we're on these notes, 19, 15, and the open string, and we have two entire measures of that. So it's going to be one yellow, two yellow, three yellow, four yellow. You don't know I may need Kurt here. Okay. Not sure. Not sure what, not sure what you mean there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you start on 19, and how I'll do this is I'll do it with a downstroke. So 19, and then take your finger off. 15 is an upstroke. And then the open high E string is... Uh... Oh, okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Um, so down, up, down, one yellow. So that takes care of one beat. So that's the first grouping. So if you're looking at your tabs, you can see that the first three notes... It's eighth notes, but they're connected together with a little bracket and a number three that's indicating that it's it's a triplet. So you've got the one yellow, two yellow, three yellow, four yellow, and there's two measures of that. So you're going to do that entire sequence twice. So, And then that would be where we'd move on to the third measure. But before we do that, let's let's look at what it is that we're doing here. So... These notes that we have, this, the uh, the nineteenth fret here on the high E string, that note's a B. The fifteenth fret is a G, and then the string open is a, is an E. So we have the notes E, G, and B. Now, don't don't worry necessarily about the order that we're playing them in. Uh, but we can, if we look at these notes, what that what that makes up. So we have an E, we have a G, and we have a B. So if we take our E minor chord, we have an E, a B, and a G. So this is actually an E minor arpeggio. So you could use that in. Um, You know, just in your, you know, in your in your own playing, because now that you know that that's an ar that's an arpeggio. So for those of you that know the the three note, uh, or not three note, the the two string uh, triads that we did the uh, um, um, these little sweeping arpeggio shapes. So there's an E right there too on the seventeenth uh, fret of the B string. But they're doing with the open string. So that is an E minor. So now we, when we go to the third measure, everything changes a little bit. So now we're going to shift up a whole step. So our first finger now is on 17. And then we're going to go to the 20th fret. And I'm just going to use my third finger. So now we start off, we play the open E string first. So it's... Open 1720 with the same timing. One yellow, two yellow, three yellow, four yellow. So we look at these notes. We have we have an A, we have a C, and an E. So if we look at an A minor chord, we have an A, an E, and a C. So by just shifting up there like that, now we've switched to an A minor arpeggio. So <clears throat> again, these are just little shapes that you can that you can use. You know, you can add this into, you know, just into your own playing. And I'm also kind of a firm believer in uh, knowing what you're playing, not just what, you know, what the shapes are or whatever, but like if you have an understanding of what it is that you're playing, why it is that way, it... Um, mm -hmm. 
it just ma- it'll just make you a better player and you know uh, further your musical vocabulary. You know, just as a musician in general. All right. So before we move on any further with this, does anybody have any questions about what I was just talking about with these being arpeggios or about how to count it or anything? You don't understand any of that. So you, you mean the as far as the the theory part of that I was talking about, or just how to play this and count it? <laughs> All right, Jersey. Okay, so um, oh, the theory part of it. Yeah, so the theory part of it. I mean, you do want to understand that you do want to know that, but that's not going to prevent you from being able to play the the riff itself. So, I mean, if you get nothing else out of this that you that actually just have like a, a new riff that you can play, then, you know, that's, that's cool too. <clears throat> All right. So we have a whole measure of the E minor arpeggio. Then we have two whole measures of the other of the a minor so that's the first four measures we've looked at i dig the stuff lynch lynch does something like this on dysfunctional albums similar hmm yeah i'm not sure i'm not sure what that is uh freedom uh I'm a huge I'm a huge George Lynch Lynch fan, but uh, um, I'm not I'm not anywhere near as familiar with the Lynch mob material as I was with uh, the Dawkins stuff. Um, yeah, so anyhow, that takes us through the first uh, uh, four measures, and then measures five and six are the same as the first two again. So that's all of the first page. That's the first six measures. So the E minor. A minor. Back to E minor. And then this is where we're going to, where we get our first uh, big change. And then this is also where it starts to become a little bit more uh, tricky. But it's still nothing that's like really, really difficult to play. Uh, and they harmonize this too. So there's actually two uh, separate parts to this. I um, guess maybe I could have done the second part too. So that way you could have, you know, had something to play with a friend or something, but didn't even think of it. All right. So after we come back from A minor to the E minor again for two more measures, then we're going to move down. The same, the same way that we moved up. So this note's going to go down a whole step, but now instead of being uh, two, you know, uh, two whole steps in between, this finger is going to come down a whole step, but our first finger is only going to come down a half step. So now we're at fourteen and seventeen. So that's starting there on, um, let's see, what is that? Measure seven. So we have a whole measure of this. Then we're going to move that just exact shape down a whole step. So now we're at the 12th and 15th fret. And then this is where we're going to start moving. Instead of just staying on one stationary place, we're going to start, we're going to start moving a whole bunch more. <clears> 
<clears throat> All right. So uh, up to that point, not too terribly, too ter not too terribly difficult to play. God, I can't even talk. Uh, but again, it it looks and sounds harder than it actually is, and it really sounds good when the two parts are together too. Uh, there, this isn't really super fast on um, on the version that I'm uh, that I'm talking about on Unleash the East. It's also there's another version of it on. Um, I can't remember the name of the live album they did when they had uh, when they had that little short stint where Halford wasn't there and that uh, uh, Ripper Owens was in there. They did a live album of him and they do this and it sounds really cool because they tuned down um, like a step and a half. So it was easier for him to hit all those Halford notes and stuff. So anyhow, this riff sounds really cool when it's tuned down like that. It sounds like really heavy. It's really, it's pretty cool. I can't remember the name of that album is though. Did anybody, anybody know what that is? That Ripper, Ripper Owens live Judas Priest album, what it's called. All right. So this is starting on measure eight where we're 15, uh, 12 open and then so that's beat one one yellow and then on beat two we're going to shift down so now we're at the 10th and 12th frets 12 10 open so so that's like one yellow two yellow and then from there you're going to shift just straight down to the b string same frets 12 10 8 and then down a whole step, 10, 8, open. So all of that right there where you really, I, you start making those changes across strings and stuff like that. It really starts to sound, again, harder than it actually is. Mm -hmm. All right, so the whole thing up to that point. <clears throat> All right, so that leads us to um, that's that was. That was beat number four on measure eight. So then on the next measure, now we're going to come down and we're seven, eight, and open. And we're going to stay on that for um, uh, two whole measures. So eight, seven, open. One yellow, two yellow, three yellow, four yellow. Next measure. Measure 10. Now, on this, to kind of get the sound that they they had. I didn't put it on, on the, the transcription. I guess I should have done, but it just, I do that a lot. Forget things, don't notice it till after it's all already a done deal. But anyway, they can palm mute that. So they do the one measure palm muted and then one measure not palm muted. So it kind of builds the, you know, the dynamic up. All right. So if you've never tried to palm mute before on the higher strings, it is a little bit, I mean, the, the technique is the same way, but there isn't, there isn't a way to just put your hand on. So you're going to palm mute all of the strings. So if I'm playing on the higher strings and I want to palm mute, I just have my hand up, you know, I just, where my palm sits on the bridge, where it's finding that sweet spot, I'll just kind of guide, you know, glide up. And then if, as I'm, as a, so if I was going to like try to palm mute an entire scale, as you can see, as I'm coming down, I had to, as I'm picking and descending the scale, I have to slide my hand this way. 
And then when I ascend, it's going to be just the opposite. All right. So after two measures of Now the timing changes and the tempo changes as well. So it uh, it goes from I can't remember now. I know I put it on here at the beginning of it. Uh, 135 beats a minute is the first part of it, where it's all the triplets. So then, starting on measure 11, we drop down to 90 beats a minute and we go into a straight 16th note uh, feel. So now we have a grouping of four notes per beat instead of three. So we, we left off here, seven, eight, and open, right? So now we're going to go to the G string, seven, nine, and then to the uh, D string, seven, eight, nine. So where this is kind of weird because it's a grouping of four now, one, two, three, four, and, or whoops, one, two, three, four, and then the uh, downbeat of two starts here. So it's in a kind of weird place. It's already got this little, little chromatic uh, uh, section. So it makes it, it makes it feel weird to count. So we're nine, seven on the G string. Then to the D string, nine, eight, seven, and then to the uh, A string, 10. So I'm going to use my pinky, 10, nine, seven. Now, for me, that's the, rather than trying to break it down into um, each beat, if that much of the, of the phrase right there is what I think is the easiest way to, to play this. So if you think of that as one part, so that brings this up through, uh, that's the first two beats. So you, you know, one E and a two E and a, you can count it that way, but it just feels weird because it doesn't, because it's not just a, a nice even group of four notes and then an even group of four notes. And then after you do that, now we're going to shift down a position so now our third finger is on the seventh fret on the, uh, the A string. So we're going to end playing that note twice. Now we shift down and we go seven, six, five, and then to the low E, seven, six, five, three, two, open. So if you think of it like like that, break break it into the two pieces. So you can practice the first one. And then er. like that. Break them down into two different pieces like that. So that way you can get you can you can get it down that that's one riff and then you're shifting even though it's all one long continuous thing that way you can shift down into the other position it just makes it a whole bunch easier uh when i was in the um i was in a a, a couple of different judas priest tribute bands and we we did this song and uh we harmonized because we had you know two guitar players and at first i had problems making that transition because i was trying to count it i was trying to play it as you know, by counting the 16th notes rather than breaking it down into two riffs. So that's why I'm saying to do that. It just, it does make it easier. All right. So that very last part again. Like that. All right. The whole thing.
basically it for guitar one. Uh, like I said, there is a harmony for it and stuff. Uh, and if there's interest in that, we could, I guess we could do that on a, on another occasion. But yeah, but that's basically the whole thing. So as far as that, that whole riff and everything that I was just talking about and stuff, does anybody have any questions about that? And also just is just like normal this is just a, you know, a general Q and a. So if anybody has any just guitar related questions, lay them on me. <laughs> I'm beyond help. Um, I don't believe that. Watchman for you. What's up? Not a much, just, you know, playing some guitar. How are you doing? Oh, hi, Rick. Thank you. Appreciate it. Can you do the intro again, though? I'm not sure what the last part of that, the R-H-Y, what that is. Always like the grinder intro. Yeah. Uh, I think that's how it is. That was one of the songs we used to play, but it's been a long time since I was in that band, so I don't, I'm not sure if that's correct, but I think it is. So yeah, uh, Watchman, for you, uh, I can play the intro again, but I'm not sure what you're asking. It says, can you do the intro again, the R-H-Y? Yeah, so that intro again. Oh, the rhythm. Oh, okay. I, I kind of I kind of thought maybe that's what, what you meant, but you know, you never know anymore over text. <laughs> um so uh you mean the rhythm like you want me to go like the how to count it? So that first part of it is all triplets. One yellow, two yellow, three yellow, four yellow, like that. That whole part, all of that, all the way up to the, is all triplets. And then it goes back and then it goes into like a 16th note thing. I've done a lot of tapping, but I'm yet to get that move you done. Uh, uh, Freedom, what, um, I'm not sure of what you're talking about. Uh, done a lot of tapping, but I've yet to get that move you done. Seen many do it, can't find it for myself. What, what move are you referring to? <laughs> School ruined me with books. Oh, 
Oh, so after the intro, the rhythm guitar parts after the intro, because during this part, there's that's all there is is just guitar, and then it's uh, the. Uh, Yeah, it's like D5, and you pick that and uh, um, slide up to E. So you're like. And then. Uh, or. Then we come down to the the low E string, uh, seven, six, five, three. Let's see. Yeah, seven, six, five, slide to three, and then it just starts over again, if that's what you're referring to. <clears throat> yeah, it's a... It's a pretty cool song. Um, when you really break it down, it's just a 12 bar blues that they, you know, hot rod it up a little bit. Yeah, the Judas Priest has like a never ending supply of just like really cool riffs. Oh, when I was doing my own, when I was just noodling around. Uh, I don't remember what it was I was doing, but it was it was it the like where you do an arpeggio and then tap after it. Oh, okay, yeah. So, do you know the arpeggio already? Basically, all it is that I'm doing, if I take like this here, this is just a C major arpeggio. So starting on the A string, it's 15, then to the D string, 14, G string, 12, B string, 13, high E string, 12, 15. And then there's different different notes that you can tap. Basically, all I'm doing is I'm just tapping just another note that's out of the arpeggio. So. Whoops. The new Ingve album, I have not heard it, but I did hear that one song. Uh, it was like the first single that he released. Um, I actually, <laughs> I was going to attempt to do a reaction video, and um, it just it just turned out really bad. Uh, so it never got published or anything, and and it was good. I mean, he played. I mean, the guy is an absolute machine. You know, he just has great technique he's he's an amazing player i have nothing bad to say about him but it what you said this is it's the best since rising since rising force well it's just it just kind of sounds like the same stuff it's like you know i kind of feel like that he's gotten into somewhat of a rut and it's just kind of the the same thing always coming out uh but that's just that's just my opinion and i only heard the one uh one song you know uh hey rich i've only heard the one song so uh maybe more of it's you know better i don't know i'll have to i'll have to check it out um but yeah if you want to you know if you want to be able to kind of practice that that arpeggio thing and you don't have to do the whole you could just do just play it on like the first three strings So when you practice doing stuff like this, you're using, you know, 
you're tapping because you're adding in an extra note that maybe you, you know, you've run out of fingers or it's too far to reach. Uh, so one thing that you don't want to do, and I, and I'm guilty of doing this. I, I did this in the past and then just decided that it's, it's not good is to, uh, since you're going to be picking, you know, tapping here, the, that you end up picking up in this area too. You should really practice where you're always returning your hand back to the position that you're in when you pick. Tap and then come back. So if you practice that someplace where it's closer and then just start working it down so you're having to move further, you know, it makes it, it'll, it'll make your technique better and then it's just, it's just a good way to put it in there. Uh... Buckethead, yeah, yeah. Um, he's Buckethead. I don't think is from this planet. I think he's an alien, because uh, and that's why he wears the mask so you can't see that he's a gray, because he just knows how to play everything. It's like there's no style that he can't play. It's crazy. Uh, Oh, you're welcome, Freedom. Uh, yeah, Buckethead, he's 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 crazy. He's great. He's he's he just insane the way he the way he plays, and he's. Uh, I don't know how many it is, but just it was a, it was a while back. But I read something that he has. He holds the, like the, like, you know, the Guinness book world record or whatever for the most albums released. Like he releases, you know, like most bands will put out a new record, you know, like once a year, every couple of years or something like that. And he's like putting out stuff just constantly and has like, you know, a whole crap load of albums considering for the amount of time that he's been, you know, on the radar, the amount of albums he has is, is absolutely nuts. Petrucci. Um, yeah. Um, so there's a lot of dream theater that it isn't, it, it's not my cup of tea to want to listen to it all the time. I like Prague, but sometimes if there's too many polyrhythm things going on, it, it's, it, you know, I like music that's got a groove to it more, but, but he's, he's a badass. Uh, the, uh, the solo for, um, Oh man, I'm brain farting. It's on images and words. It's the song that um, it's kind of a ballady song and it has like a saxophone solo kind of in the intro of it. I can't think what the name of that song is, but the, the guitar solo on that is one of my all time favorite guitar solos. It's absolutely amazing. To be honest, guys like Buckethead don't do it for me. Like Lynch Rhodes and Gilbert. Uh, yeah, Buckethead, as far as a lot of the stuff he does is like, you know, as far as, you know, being, you know, musical and like music to put on, you know, go on a road trip to. Yeah, probably not for me either, but the guy is like an absolutely sick player. <laughs> Under a Glass Moon, thank you. Yes, that that solo is absolutely amazing and it's so clean there's parts in it where he he just does stuff that it's just ridiculous that he that he can play clean yeah mind-blowing for sure for sure <clears throat> uh one of the things i wanted to do um for one of these uh live streams but I, I'm still having trouble on the technical side getting some of this crap to work. But um, uh, I wanted to have like a little discussion about like we did about, remember we had the debate about the top five, you know, real influential guitar players. I wanted to do one uh, on guitar players that are really awesome, but they're really underrated. They're really kind of not, they're not as uh, popular or well-known as guys like, you know, like 
Eddie Van Halen, you know, everybody knows who Eddie Van Halen is, or even George Lynch, you know, ha, has a, is pretty famous, but then there's other players that are just amazing that, that aren't. So I wanted to actually do a whole, uh, a show on that. Would that be something that you guys would be interested in? Like, you know, uh, you know, you could bring me, you know, your picks too. Les Paul, he's amazing. All right, cool. I'll try to get the, I'll try to get this technical stuff figured out. It's just, I think what it's kind of boiling down to is that I don't think my computer is powerful enough because it's, uh, it's, it's fairly old. Yes, Doug Aldridge, although pretty famous, but, um, he, uh, but I don't think he gets the credit that's deserved. You know, like so playing is, some of his playing is like pretty awesome. Quick demo on sweep picking. Um, well, that's a pretty, that's a pretty big subject, but I guess something that I could, you know, just to show you to, uh, give you something to kind of work with. It's really easy, or I shouldn't say it's easy. It's easier if you just start off with just playing just on, like on the first three strings, rather than trying to, going across all six. So if you start here, the, remember the, uh, the triads we did. So that shape that looks like D, that's a major triad, so... Instead of using these fingers, you use your first finger on the G string, second finger on the B, first finger on the E, and then your pinky. So that is, that's a, a, a uh, arpeggio. And it, that's a major arpeggio, and you can move it around wherever. So for as far as the technique for it, if you're descending, this first note here, you can pick and then do an upstroke because the next string will be an upstroke or you could pick as an upstroke and do a pull off either way you want to do it but the whole idea behind it is is that when you're when you're whichever direction you're going it's one long continuous pick stroke you don't want it to be like where you're doing a bunch of separate picks you want it to be so how I do it is like if we start here on the G string, I pick that note and just let the pick come to a rest on the B string. Pick the B string, let it come to a rest on the high string. Descending is this, just this the opposite. So picking the high E, letting it come to a rest on the B. Picking the B, letting it come to a rest on the G. And then just slowly just start building your way into it. So if you're if you're doing one that you know what uh, the uh, the key is, you know like what the notes are. So like if we did it up here, it the uh, um, <coughs> at the twelfth fret, um, that's C. That's a, that's C major. And if you wanted to do it minor, you just move, flatten this note down. So you could eat, you know, if you're now you just know that the next that the next note that's going to be coming is is one of the notes. It's either C, E, or G. So there's your C. Okay, it looks like I missed a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, I've heard players that I respect that are tech savvy, but I wouldn't, but I wouldn't want to play that way. I'm more drawn to technique. I love your noodling, Uncle D. It's more of my thing. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, that Doug Aldridge with Dio live. I don't, I don't know if I've heard that. I, doesn't, I don't remember that. 
but I don't mean anything. My memory sucks. Uh, Okay, I'm Oh, an open detuning. Okay, I'm sitting there I'm I'm I was way overthinking that. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll have to check that out. I don't really mess around a whole lot with open tunings. I should, because every time I do, I'm like, oh, this is fun, and then I just never do it again. Oh, yeah, my my ACDC shirt, this thing is is hammered. It's It's really old, but it's cold today, so I needed to layer up. Oh, all right, cool, great. Well, uh, right, so this has kind of turned out better. I was a little concerned when this this started off tonight, kind of kind of funky, but yeah, it's all turned out really good. I'm, I really enjoy this when we just sit and you know, kind of hang out and, and chat and stuff and talk guitar. I could do this all day. It's good. It's good time. Um, all right, so we're getting we're getting close to the end here. So uh, does anybody have any any other questions or uh, anything? Yeah, Rich, I'm, uh, I mean, metal is really like what got me into playing guitar in the first place, but I, uh, I listen to like a lot, a, a lot of different, uh, music. Um, I'm a big believer that variety is the spice of life. And there's been many times that I've come up with a lick that I really liked that I wanted to use for like metal that I came up with because I was playing country or jazz or something else, you know, so it's, it's good. Not that I'm like all great at either one of those uh, genres, but it's good to, you know, to try different things and play different stuff. Uh, who was your artist that got you into guitar? Um, so what originally made me want to play guitar was, uh, was kiss. Um, when I was, mm, I don't know, like five years old, six years old or something like that, I was, uh, um, I remember watching TV and there was a TV commercial for Kiss. They were coming to town and I just remember the way they looked and all the fire and everything. I, th I just thought it was really awesome. And uh, anyhow, a little, a little while later, uh, I went with my brother to the uh, the store, he, he wanted to buy a record. And when he, how we went in there, he was going to buy Fleetwood Mac rumors, which is an awesome album. Lindsay Buckingham, one of my favorite guitar players. And I talked him out of buying that. And I talked him into buying rock and roll over. And then that was really where it started. And then when uh, I got kiss alive too, and I heard the solo, you know, Ace release, you know, stage solo on shock me. I was just like, wow, I, I that's what I want to do. I want to learn how to play. And ironically, I've never learned that. I've never actually sat down and tried to oh. learn really any of the real things that made me want to play guitar, you know, like real hero riffs. Um, I don't know why, but I, I just never gotten around to it. Um, but yeah, that's, that was initially what made me pick it up. And then I played and, you know, and kind of fired around with it and was in, and, and it was in the eighties. So I was like learning how to play a lot of I learned like a ton of Black Sabbath was like the first stuff I learned. And then I started learning, you know, Motley Crue and Poison and Warrant and things like that in the 80s. Iron Maiden, Metallica, all that kind of stuff. And then uh, I was 
in high school, it was like my junior or senior year, and I heard uh, Paul Gilbert and Ingve and all that kind of stuff, and it just completely changed my uh, my life as far as you know what I wanted to do. Um, what kind of a guitar is that? Uh, this is a Spear Gladius HTHG. Uh, I believe that's the model. It's a Gladius. I think it's an HTHG. They have they have a million of them with all these different codes, and I, I could be wrong, but I believe that's what it is. Uh, Randy Rhodes, another one of my favorite players. Oh, well, thank you, Rich. I really appreciate that. That isn't something I ever hear anybody say, and it... Oh, thank you. I really, I really appreciate that. Yeah, Paul Gilbert's the sh he's the the shin dizzle man. Yeah, I, I listened to ACDC and a lot. Um, like uh, Back in Black was one of the the first albums that I got on vinyl that was like a cool record and not, you know, you know like. Disney, Mickey Mouse, or Hand Me Downs. You know, I used to get a lot of these these records, like my sister's Hand Me Down, select a lot of disco and stuff like that. But then later on, I ended up really appreciating that a lot of the bass players in in disco music are were were smoking good. High school, I drank too much and swung wrenches. Hey, I did the same thing. That's my other. That's my alter ego is uh, wrenching on cars. Oh, thanks, Freedom. Yeah, I didn't, uh, I didn't paint it, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they call this the scratched iron finish, and it's 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 pretty cool. So if you get up close and look at it, you can actually see the gets. They just painted the guitar black, and then they took uh, a paintbrush, like a wide paintbrush, like you'd paint your house with, and dipped it in silver spray paint, and then just put these marks on there and clear coated over it. I think it looks pretty cool too. That's three of us. You're a you were a too much of a drinker and a wrencher too. Yeah, back in black is. Uh, I have my own personal, unofficial list of you know like the ten greatest albums of on of all time, and that album is on my top ten. misspent youth well i remember when i was a kid my grandma used to always say youth is wasted on the young and i didn't understand it i have a pretty good understanding of what they mean now uh did i make mistakes yep everybody does but all of the things that i did and went through has made, has made me who i am today you know so can't complain too much i guess <laughs> you remembered it. You didn't do it right. Well, if I was to write a, a, an autobiography, it would be uh, it would be a leaflet, you know, because I, I can't remember. I know that I did certain things that I probably shouldn't have done, but I I don't I don't remember it. Uh, all right. Well, we're about out of time, um, but. I appreciate everybody that came around and stuck it out to the end. I mean, the, the whole, you know, the Judas priest content kind of got over pretty quick. Uh, um, I'll be honest. Sometimes when I come on to do this, I have a little bit of anxiety about it. And uh, so I, I end up kind of rushing through things sometimes. Oh, the Buck Owens red, white, and blue uh, um, Telecaster. Yeah. Buck Owens, another, another killer, uh, killer player. Senior year, nineteen seventy-eight. Holy cow! <laughs> Just kidding. <clears throat>
Thanks, Rich. I appreciate it. And thank you, Jersey, too. You you are OG. You've been here since day one. And I think that you've only missed one live stream since I started. So, you you know, you're, you're OG. Um, ah, the breakdown. I can't remember it. I cannot remember it. It's a bummer. Tuck Andrus. Well, maybe you are then because I have no idea who that is. <laughs> but again, thanks everybody for, you know, sticking around, you know, all the way through this and stuff. This is the kind of, when we get into these, you know, we just have a chat. That's what I really like. And just sometimes just the vibe, <laughs> it isn't there, you know, but uh, it was tonight, you know, and this is fun. So if, uh, if you like what I'm doing, you know, Hit the like button, leave a comment. Uh, you know, subscribe to the channel, yada yada, all that stuff that I say every time, and every YouTuber says, you know, because of the algorithm. And I don't even know squat about that, but all I know is that if the participation and the likes and the views and everything and stuff, it shows the boss that I'm doing a good job. So that's, uh, if you want me to continue to do this, then help me out and do that kind of stuff. Huh. All right. Well, again, thank you everybody for coming out. Um, I will be back, uh, um, next week. Um, uh, Thursdays are just, are just a, a difficult day. So, I mean, there might be times when I do a spontaneous one on Thursdays, but as a general rule, it's going to be Tuesday and or Wednesday, that kind of thing. Oh, thank you, Freedom. I appreciate it. All right. Again, thanks everybody for coming out. Really appreciate it. And I hope everyone has a great night and a good weekend and all that jazz. And I will see you next week. <laughs>